Good to see you, Jim. Good to see you, How Rich. Are you, I'm doing good, good. So, uh, I know you're constantly testing to see if you're cancer-free, yeah. right? This is this is your life now, correct? Yeah, but where my yeah where my cancer was at, um, it was in the um, more the global so cell uh, area, and for me, it's every three months for the rest of my life. But the thing is, uh, you know what? Whatever. So as long what as I'm still above, that's all comes. What happened last week, Jim? Um, the, you know, I get MRIs every three months mm -hmm. and, uh, they could not tell exactly what they were seeing from the MRI. So they made me take a CAT scan and PET scan a week later. And, uh, that was not conclusive of what they thought it might be. And, uh, where, as I said, where my cancer was, um, if it moves just a tiny bit towards, uh, uh, the area where there's no return, it's days, and um, then there's no turn back. So they wanted to make sure that it was nothing, and uh, thank God it came back that uh, it's just real heavy buildup of scar tissue, and I'm um, good for next three months. So you went in, and they said you need to have a surgical procedure? Yeah. The doctors told this to you yeah, well, last week. Yeah, and thing is, I'm claustrophobic, which I never was until. Uh, and I'm sure anybody out there's ever been an MRI machine, and but I have to get contrast, so they have to run me through the MRI. To make a long story short, they do the put the you know the blood. I mean, uh, different barium and different things in whether it's a CT scan or an MRI, and I wind up having to do that again. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. But uh, they wind up getting an M another MRI, went through that, and uh, they could not find exactly where it was at again. So, and then I had to go, um, uh, they had to surgically go in and take some biopsies. Knock you out. Yeah, knock me out. And uh, that in itself, I mean, biopsies, if anybody's ever had them, it's like somebody's going to the dentist and they're ripping your gums apart. And that's pretty much what they do. They tear, take chunks of your in, inner skin in your mouth, way in the back where my cancer was. And uh, they just chop away and then they send them off to a lab and hopefully they test, uh, the tests come back negative, which they did. So, but... Uh, it's something that uh, it's not great, no. but you know what, Rich? You know, I travel so much now, and I, I see and meet so many people, and I talk to people. I see individuals that have so much worse than I do. And the thing is, I don't complain because I'm so blessed. I have great family support. My wife, oh, God bless her, my two daughters, mm -hmm. and my five brothers. I mean, I have family support that when you're in a hospital and you look at people that don't have that, I can understand why some people have tough days and tough times getting over it and getting through with it, but I'm so blessed to have quality people that are always pushing that positive attitude on me. So, and your wife, Jill, was basically tweeting out and Instagramming no. out what was going on with you. <laughs> you know, I go, and please don't do this to me. She said, you need as many people praying for you as possible, which is, which is true. Yeah. But I don't like airing all my laundry out. I mean, it's just sometimes it's like, okay, Joe, enough, you know? Mm -hmm. And it bums me out sometimes, but I do understand that she's right pretty much most of the time. So I let her do her thing and well, my daughter. It's not just that, too, though, Jim. It's, it's people who you were talking about who have it, as you say, worse than yeah. you. That they see the way you are going through it, dealing with it, and knowing that it's part of your daily life and how you are handling it. And, I mean, three, four days after, as you said, the biopsy scraping around inside your head, you're sitting here in Los Angeles going about your life. It is something that yeah. I think people want to have shared with them, well, you quite know, frankly. Thing, you you got to carry on your life. And uh, it, it was, uh, uh, yes, to a, to a certain point, a hard decision, but I'm here to see Peyton. Uh, Peyton Manning. Me, Peyton Manning. Me Not Sean Peyton, Peyton who no, just no, left. Well, here. yeah, it was good to see Sean, Coach Sean, too. Right. But, uh, no, I'm here for Peyton's uh, retirement party, and, and I've gotten to know him, and I know Archie really well, and then, be honest with you, to a certain point also, is to spend a little time just with me and my wife. Um, we just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. We went to Italy for two weeks. We took our two daughters with us. And so I said, you know what? Let's just you and I go out, and we'll spend a little time out here. And then I'm going from here back to my hometown and visit my high school football coach for about five days, which uh, – I haven't seen him in a little while, and I'm still very close to him. And uh, if it wasn't for Jill, we wouldn't have known. I guess you have uh, uh, an affinity for chocolate milk. What? what <laughs> she said that's what you asked for as soon as you got out of chocolate the shake. Called chocolate <laughs> shake. Is that is that what you asked for? It's me? interesting. Uh, yeah, she said you want any, you need any medicine or anything. I go, no, I just want a chocolate milkshake. Uh, I, I've always loved chocolate milkshakes, even back to the time Frank Reich and I. 
uh, you know, back in the day where we'd go out for lunch on Fridays and I'd order chocolate milkshake, Frank would order vanilla. Yeah. And uh, we even got to the point where we were so superstitious that we had to keep doing that. And I remember one Super Bowl, they even sent to us mm -hmm. in Minneapolis when we played the Redskins. Yes. Uh, our table, our chairs, our plates, our silverware, and a frozen chocolate shake, the Federal Express. It didn't work either. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.